Yeah, welcome to the Economy and Politics Show. I'm Otto Abasi Abaseko. In this edition, we begin our analysis in the Nigerian 2016 federal budget, which is estimated at 6.08 trillion naira. We need to look at this budget. Is a seasoned economist, developmental one for that matter, architect Kola Ogunle. It's good to have you and Happy New Year to you, sir. Happy New Year, good day. Yes. And like I just said, it's um, 6.08 trillion, but the benchmark is $38. Is that sustainable for Nigeria? Yeah, well, uh, let me let me start by saying that um, the budgets that have been christened the budget of, the budget of change is um, a little bit on the side of um, too much on the side of enthusiasm and optimism. Uh, let me put it that way. It's not anchored on realistic assumptions, and when one of the pillars of that unrealistic assumption is the benchmark price for oil. As we all know, Nigeria's economy is majorly dependent on oil up until now. And um, the fact of the matter is that the behavior of oil in the, uh, in the well, market, in the commodities market, market yes. is something that leaves much to be desired. It's volatile. Over a year now. As we speak now, we are looking at a situation where most uh, analysts are thinking of maybe $30 before March this year. And we presented a budget a couple of weeks ago, and we are still talking of $38. That, for me, is the height of being unrealistic when it comes to assumptions underlying your budget. Why are we running away from the reality? Another assumption that will not hold is that even as we speak, transactions in the international uh, exchange market is pitching Naira at about 270 Naira per dollar. I'm not talking about buying dollars from Malam. I'm talking of banks charging people at the rate of 270 Naira per dollar when they are doing online transactions. So why are we still talking about benchmarking our exchange rate at 197 Naira per dollar? This is also the height of being unrealistic. Aside from that is also the fact that a major pillar of that budget, which is supposed to be the fiscal regime, the fiscal policy regime or stance, has not been properly highlighted, other than the fact that we have a deficit of close to two trillion naira, and out of a budget of six trillion naira. And don't forget that a budget of two, uh, six trillion naira with a deficit of two trillion naira means that we are looking at about 30 percent to be ex to be financed through loans. What are the implications of that on the money market, on the effect and the effect on the private sector? If this if this government is very sincere about its love for the private sector, we cannot afford the budget that says we are going to borrow close to one trillion naira from the Nigerian money market. As so, it were, so or capital that market. It yes. doesn't value the private sector even when yes. the president so says that will be What will happen now is that there will be crowding, crowding out effects whereby private sector people will not be able to access loans at reasonable rates. So these are all the issues that, have, uh, that I see almost immediately as, as we are talking about, even without going into the figures, which might just be cloud the quality of what we are trying to put across to our viewers. You know. Now, when we look at the projected um, revenue, about 3.7 trillion approximately. Yes. Do you believe this government will be able to achieve that efficacy in tax collection? Because it says it wants to generate revenue yep. to finance the budget. Yes. Let me, that? let me divide that aspect of your question into two. Yeah. As a tax consultant, yes. you know, um, I, I can tell you straight away that there are two ways through, uh, through which you can boost your tax revenue. One is to deepen the pocket of those who are still paying now, which is practically impossible right now, or widen the net, bring more people into the net. That's one leg. Those two are one leg. The other leg is reform the tax law in a way that will enable more people to pay. Right now, under the existing law, which we hold throughout 2016, because even when you start doing a law now, like where they have submitted a set of reforms to the National Assembly, before it actually becomes something that can be used 
for the purpose of tax collection and billing we are looking at next year. So as we speak today, the law that exists in Nigeria today, in respect of oil-related taxes, companies' income tax, and other taxes, other taxes that are, you know, collectible by the federal, uh, by the federal government, you know, you find out that things are very tough in those domains. So that projection itself, we need to look at what are the underlying assumptions for three point something uh, trillion naira. The FRS, yes. To for example, for example, the FRS is going to have a lot of issues. Yes, and look at what we are looking at now. Oil related taxes are going to go down. I, I hope that have been factored in. And if yes. it has been factored in, and we are looking You're at 197, and this thing is going the way it is, don't forget that all oil-related taxes are also related to the benchmark price of crude oil. Whether, it's call, whether you call it royalties or any other form of taxation that is going to come from that area. The companies are not doing well in Nigeria. Look at the, uh, our index, you know, the capital market index. It has been falling. The, the, uh, the dividends are not coming out. Profits are going down. We are almost um, on the verge of a recession. Therefore, whatever projections you are making on revenue that is collectible, at best, can be described as you know just what it is, guesswork. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, th those things we discussed are one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is, what about even budget implementation? Yes, the willpower. Yes, not only the wind power, the, 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 the capacity you know, to implement your budget. Don't let us miss out one point. This budget is 70 to 30. Capital, Capital 30, to recurrent. So recurrent is 70%. And my costly glance at the 1,800-page document that is called the appropriation details revealed to me that we are just a set of jokers. There are so many things there. You mean the government is joking? Yes, because if you are telling me that it's we are serious, still... A budget yes, is a yes, issue. It, I mean, and we call this a budget of change. If you see some of the items that are there, I might even have to do a paper to be posted on Prussia on that analysis alone. Well, we still find analysis. funny figures like we used to find in the previous budgets. We are not yet into zero-based budgeting. What they keep doing is doing incremental budgeting. What did you spend last year? Okay, not even minding how much was returned to the treasury as incapable of being spent due to lack of 100% implementation. So, so you just say, I, 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 I was allocated 1 billion last year. Okay, 10% increase or 11% increase. You go to 1.1 billion. That's what we still see. There are still aspects of the budget that is continuing what was done before, not under capital now under the current. Then I begin to wonder, those are things they said they will complete in the first quarter of this year. So when you look at the whole gamut of the budget process and the outcome from the ex executive, except something drastic happens at the legislative level, we may find ourselves in a situation where we can hardly get out of where we were before. And the reason is that even as they are saying that they have moved to 30% in capital, how do you implement it? The capital budget is going to be handled by three ministries right now. Fashola's education. ministry. Yeah. I don't know what to call that one, whether to call it a ministry or to call it a tri-ministry. Well, he calls it a ministry. Power, works, and housing. Yeah. It's going to spend over 400 billion on capital. The education is about 300 369. billion. Then uh, our friend from Rivers, Amechi, is going That's to spend over 200 billion. And so that's your capital budget. And I'm saying that, and they said most of the loans to be taken will be used to finance capital projects. Yes. Fine, it might look okay, but what we are saying this is. This is viewed to stimulate growth and create jobs. Yes, that's a challenge stimulate, growth and, uh, stimulate growth and create jobs. That linkage has not been established. It's like, a, it's like a strategic plan that comes out with strategic objectives. Okay, what's the linkage there? The linkage that ought to be there is link those things to the job to be created. How many jobs are going to be created by the Minister of Works and Housing and Power? I need to know. That's budgeting. That's the data. Yes, that I need to know. It's not about, it's about what, when you have the linkage between your objective, the measures, and what you want to achieve. 
for so, evaluation. Yeah, so so that I can say, say for the instance, year. that yes, those three ministries, capital, uh, uh, um, uh, capital budget is so much, but I know that at the end of the day. This is what you're going to get from, yes, from there. From there. Yes. That is not there right now. We need to do that in our budgeting system, especially in an era where we are being told that we will take loans to execute this capital project and we want to use them to stimulate the economy. The multiplier effect change, the cost effect analysis must be put there. And I know that when it gets to the National Assembly, we are not likely to have all those ones. They don't ask critical questions. Okay. Right now, Maybe we have one of an you know, and don't also change. forget that our president has described himself as a lame dog president, with all the uh, with all the meanings of that. Yes, lame dog. Yes, that's a strong. And um, and um, yeah, what he's saying is that uh, the judiciary is there, the legislature is there. He can't do much on his own. That he still has to make sure that this that, is a, demo the this is a democratic setup. That's Let me quickly point out this: one hundred and fifteen billion is going to be spent in the national assembly. They also have their level in separation of powers. And then also, and also, and also, what we are saying is that we expect that this idea of big chunk of the budget going to the National Assembly should be stopped by now. There are things that need to be done on this budget that have not been done. I am happy to read in the papers yesterday that subsidy has finally gone. In a paper that I jointly authored with your boss, we made it abundantly clear that if we are looking at foreign exchange management, one area, one major area through which FX has been siphoned out of the country or utilized, let me put it that way, in order to be charitable to those involved, is through this subsidy regime. And thank God it has been removed, which means that we are going to save a minimum of close to one trillion naira in subsidy payments. And then let us do for other ways by which that chunk of money can be used to affect the downtrodden masses of this country in terms of attending to the need of those who really, really, really are in trouble as the economy goes through this crisis that nobody is shying about mentioning now. There was a time if you say the economy is in dire straits, people are like, are like what do you mean? It's all not selling. Now I think it's the president has come out to say we are in difficult times. Mm -hmm.